Viewer discretion is advised. Lily Upston was taken to Site 85 to help with Dr. Jonas' investigation of a possible anomaly and to receive a grave news regarding her son, Dr. Charlie Upston. I'm Dr. Jonas, your son, Mr. Upston's colleague. Could you tell me more about where you found the teddy bear? Well, I saw it sitting on my bed after my morning jog. It freaked me out a little as I remember. It could not sit up straight when Charlie had it, and it was thrown away when he moved out. When did you first notice that something was out of the ordinary? I got a call from someone who I assumed to be his colleague, telling me that Charlie was dead. I, I fainted from the shock and woke up on my bed somehow, and that was when I noticed the bear pressing a wet towel on my face. I freaked out after realizing that I was not imagining things and threw it out of my window. But when I turned back, it it was on my bed. Then I tried running out of the house, but it was on my dining table when I got to the first floor. Is this some kind of joke or prank from my son? Dr. Jonas sighed heavily. Miss Upston, there's no easy way to explain all this. W what do you mean? First of all, it wasn't a joke. So, so sorry, Miss Upston, but Charlie's gone. He was killed when a specimen escaped from our laboratory and broke through one of the walls. Unfortunately, Dr. Upston was standing on the opposite side when it broke free and was killed by it. What? You're lying, right? Dr. Jonas then somberly slid a folder towards Miss Upston. When she took out a photograph from the folder, tears began to flood her eyes. She couldn't say anything but sob and repeat her dead son's name. Dr. Jonas crossed his arms and stared at her with a heavy look. Suddenly, the teddy bear manifested next to her and began to rub her back. It then looked up at Dr. Jonas and shook its head. Dr. Jonas sighed, stood up, and walked to the camera and turned it off. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-6485. SCP-6485, also known as Want a Coffee for Your Head, is a toy that manifests approximately an hour after one's expiration, often to the deceased's closest family members and friends. It has no fixed appearance but generally appears as a stuffed animal or doll, typically taking the form of a deceased's favorite toy from their adolescence. Testing confirms that 6485's composition and physical appearance are non-discernible from similar non-sapient toys. 6485 exhibits signs of sapience, is able to move on its own accord, and communicate via a range of gestures or writing. It has also been observed to have heightened reflexes and an unexplained knowledge of a subject's likes and dislikes. Upon manifestation, 6485 has been observed to express affection by bringing the subject items and cooking simple dishes of the subject's preference, as well as give hugs and pats. It is also able to produce physical childhood pictures of the deceased's past, even when they were previously destroyed. While it has its own consciousness, it may follow orders given to it by subjects if it deems it necessary for them to move on from their family members or friends' death. Prolonged exposure to 6485 will cause a subject's mental state and morale to improve greatly and gain closure faster than people who are not exposed to 6485. After junior researcher Charlie Upston's death on the 20th of November 2020, an instance of 6485 taking the form of a teddy bear was discovered around Miss <laughs> Upston. She has agreed to accompany Foundation personnel to Site 85 for further testing and observation. As 6485 is incapable of vocalization, it is allowed to communicate via writing its messages on a whiteboard provided. Miss Upston became uncooperative with Foundation personnel, and she would say nothing but curses towards the Foundation. Eventually, she refused to partake in further interviews. Dr. Jonas could only let 6485 to be around her and report back periodically. The door to Miss Upston's room opened and 6485 walked in with its whiteboard and a tray of food. She was lying awake on her bed staring at the wall. Her eyes were noticeably red with rings under her eyelids as well. 6485 set the tray down next to her bed, then climbed on before shaking her. What do you want? Good morning. You didn't seem to be eating as much lately, so I went ahead and made some breakfast for you. 
Miss Upston picked up the cup of coffee from the tray and sipped. This flavor, that's how I like it. And how Charlie used to make this for me. How do you know about this? 6485 only stared at Miss Upston with its unblinking eyes as if to reassure her that everything will be all right. <laughs> you know, it's just so unfair. <laughs> just when things are looking up for him, he... She shook her head as her voice cracked. I was really excited to meet him again, you know? <laughs> when I heard that he was offered an internship here, I was so happy for him. I was so excited to hear about the things he had done and all the people he met. They didn't... I didn't think that he would pass away so soon. Now I just... wish that I could see him again. And tell him how much I love him. And how I'm so proud of him. I want to hear his voice again. <laughs> she cried. 6485 stroked her back gently with its little hand and hugged her. The next session, 6485 walked in and noticed the untouched food at the foot of her bed. It climbed onto her bed and gently shook Miss Upston. What do you want now? 6485 scribbled on its whiteboard and passed it to Miss Upston. She squeezed her eyes as she struggled to focus her vision. I'm worried for you. You haven't been eating much, and everyone's been concerned. Well, you can tell them to stop worrying, all right? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. So don't worry about me, all right? Just leave me alone. I'll figure things out by myself. Please, let me help you, 6485 wrote on the whiteboard. Miss Upston scoffed. When 6485 reached out to her, it was pushed away. Help? What do you mean, help? You haven't done anything ever since you came into my life. So what makes today any different? When I want time to myself so I can grieve alone, you barge into my personal space. Silence for a moment. 6485 looked down, saddened. Miss Upston noticed the tray of food. It was the meal Charlie used to make for her during weekends and the coffee mug was her birthday present with a printed picture of her and Charlie almost faded now. It's all nothing but a reminder that he'll never come back. Do you understand? I... I'm sorry for lashing out. I can't deal with this pain. Please, just leave me alone, okay? The next day, 6485 visited Miss Upston in her room as usual. It ran over to Miss Upston excitedly, leaving the door open and shook her awake. What is it this time? Someone has requested me to let her see you. She's a friend of Charlie, and she's waiting outside right now. Would you like her to enter? Miss Upston nodded hesitantly. 6485 quickly jumped off the bed and exited her room. A moment later, 6485 walked back in again alongside junior researcher Lilith Agnes. Dr. Agnes walked towards Miss Upston as 6485 pulled a chair over to her bed. Um, hi, Miss Upston. I'm Agnes, one of Charlie's colleagues. I, um... <laughs> Dr. Agnes broke down and started to sob. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I caused him to die. <laughs> what? do you mean? He died protecting me. I... I was new in the team and... I made a mistake in one of the projects and let one of the more dangerous specimens loose. When it came for me, Charlie pushed me away and was killed instead. If I wasn't so Clumsy and stupid. He wouldn't be dead. Hey, hey, don't blame yourself. It's nobody's fault he died, all right? It's been eating me up inside. When I heard what you said about the foundation, knowing that I caused all this pain and grief to you, and everyone else having to be the ones to take the blame for it. I just couldn't live with my 
myself, knowing he's dead because of me. <laughs> I... I'd be lying if I say I'm not mad, or... I don't know. I'm a mess now. I'm very emotional right now. I wasn't thinking straight when I lashed out. I just don't know how to feel, and I chose to blame everyone. I thought that the people here in your branch just didn't care about Charlie when he died. But now, after hearing it from you, someone who was close to and a friend of him... Miss Upston then looked at 6485, who sat idly beside the grieving women. I realized I was wrong. It is something I also have to come to terms with as well. That it is no one's fault for Charlie's death. I'm so sorry I've made you feel this way for so long. If anything, I'm proud of my son's action. And I'd like you to live on. That's what he would want too. I'm still figuring out my feelings on my own, and I don't know how it is going to be from this point forward, but I know there's someone to help and guide me through this process, and make it easier to grieve and come to terms with it. But I don't think that there will be people as lucky as me to have some sort of a support group to deal with it. That's why I want to pay it forward and give you that shoulder to cry on if you need it. So please, don't worry about how I feel. I forgive you. Dr. Agnes burst into <laughs> sobs, and the women hugged each other. Dr. Agnes was crying and apologizing as Miss Upston patted her back and whispered words of forgiveness. 6485 slowly walked over to the door, and before it left the room, it looked back at the grieving women. Then, it gently closed the door and left. <laughs>